Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 16, 2021 Hempstead Town Board Meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Supervisor Clayton. Here. Councilman Clayton. Here. Councilman Green. Here. Councilman Esposito. I'm here. Councilman Dunn. Here. Senior Councilman Mooski. Councilman Muscarello. Pleasant. I'm now going to ask County Executive Elect Bruce Blakeman to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and congratulations. <laughs> Please rise if you're able and join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We'll hearings and uh, we'll go through that and we'll stick around after as customary to public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the first public hearing. The first uh, public hearing is a proposal to law regarding regulations and restrictions to limit parking in Merrick and Roosevelt. Okay, I do not have any slips on item number one on the calendar. Is anybody here in the public that wishes to be heard on item number one? If not, may I have a motion? I move the motion be closed and accepted. Supervisor Cleveland. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman G. Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Guzman. Aye. Councilman Musgrove. Aye. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please call the next item. We have a proposed local law regarding parking or standing prohibitions in Floral Park, Merritt, Roosevelt, and Woodman. Okay, I do have a slip, uh, Ms. Meriday. Uh, first, if you could, all speakers, please go to the back mic location. Uh, please give me name and address for the record. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Nina J. Meriday, Baldwin resident. My question with regard to, well, actually, for number one and for number two, just with regard to the actual implementation of these restrictions and not to mention the safety hazards and some of these corners in locations such as Roosevelt where I used to live and Baldwin where I live now and how are these act laws actually going to be enforced because there seems to be an enforcement problem when it comes down to communities of color and many of our elderly as well as our young people are continuing to um, in jeopardy with regard to the lack of safety supports and reinforcements in, in terms of the actual enforcement of these laws. So you can put the sign up, but then what happens when somebody is in violation when you do not have the number of patrols in these communities, as well as the reinforcements, as you would say in, okay, Garden City South or the Five Towns. Again, taxes are paid as diligently in these communities as in all the others that seem to get more of the resources. So many communities and these residents are very concerned about the lack of enforcement with regard to this type of signage and this type of process. Thank you. If somebody can answer that question for change, I would appreciate it. Well, but actually, uh, this, this nice gentleman right here can identify and answer your question. Sure. Right. Good evening, Supervisor Clayton, uh, Senior Councilman Goosby, Town Board. Uh, Tom Reed representing Travel Patrol Division. Uh, Nassau County the Police Department is usually the ones responsible for enforcement of the parking laws. So they would have to be notified. But if yeah. someone sees a violation, then they can call the police department. Or if you have a location that is uh, specific that you know of, we can reach out to the police department for you and have them do the enforcement. Okay. Next question, what is the fiscal impact as it pertains to this particular law? Are we talking about new signs that have to be put up? What is the cost of those signs? How many of those signs? Who's producing those signs as far as the involvement and the inclusion of businesses that are owned by minorities, veterans, the disabled? Again, these are questions that continue to be pondered when we continue to see the same people, the same politically connected individuals who are getting the benefit of those residents who are not seeing people who look like them who are putting up the signs or getting the purchase orders to develop these. So how many signs does this impact? Well, these are several cases uh, in the two items that you are questioning. Yes. A lot of them are parking restriction requests, uh, either for churches, homeowners, or businesses. And then we discuss with the homeowner what they want. And then if they want, like, say, a handicapped parking, 
uh, restriction. We give them that as long as they provide a copy of the handicap placard. Or a business may need uh, maybe longer term parking. Uh, we may have to go out and change the existing restrictions to accommodate what they need. But we work with the public in trying to uh, implement parking restrictions. And if residents who have these type of signage put up, if something happens to those signs, who would they then respond to? Who can they go to to get those same signs either replaced or, as they said, as you said, so if there's any infractions, they should report that to the police department? Uh, that's correct. And if the sign is damaged or something, people usually contact our office. I'll send the crew out to fix the sign and replace uh, anything that's faded, dirty, or broken. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't have any other slips. Is any member of the public wish to be heard by number two? Okay, if not, I lose that motion. Move that the public hearing be closed and have the local law be adopted. Supervisor Clay. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz Casita. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Dusty. Aye. Councilman Musgrove. Aye. And I'd like to thank you on behalf of the church on the Babylon Turnpike and also on behalf of the Roosevelt area. They're very thankful and grateful to us for being able to get those signs up to get those, tr those trucks removed from in front of their churches. Because when service comes on Sunday or they have a funeral, they have to work a whole mile with the body in order to get there because people don't care. They take those big trucks and so forth and they park them where they should not be parked. So I want to thank the, your department so much for what you did. Madam Clerk, please go next item. Did we do the proposed local law regarding arterial stops and food? We have not. Oh. All right. And so. Oh, and Monto, excuse me. And Monto, that's it? And Monto. Okay. That's so item number three on the calendar. I do not have any slips on item number three. Does anybody remember the board wish we heard on? All right, is any member of the public here tonight which we are on number three? If not, may I please have a motion. Supervisor, I move that the public hearing be closed and the proposed local law be adopted. I second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Casito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Boosby. Aye. Councilman Muscarella. Aye. And so please call next item. We have a proposed local law regarding bus stops in Roosevelt. Any member of the board wish to be heard on this? I think he should explain to them so they understand what it's about. Okay. That bus stop in particular. Maybe somebody from a traffic division come up and talk about that? Please come explain that. I know it has something to do with the fact that um, the person who lived in there had a problem with all the cars that were blocking his street. And so what he wanted to do was move it so that they could not, you know, have that space to block. Okay. So it worked out. Great. Uh, and any other comments from the board? All right, I do not have any slips on this item. Is anybody here at town hall which we heard item number number four on the calendar? Okay, that's it. Yes? Hey, could you give me name and address to the record, please? Good evening, Mary Baldwin. Um, I think that a clarity, because it says bus stop, so are we talking about what actually is going to happen with regard to the bus stop in question, or are we talking about multiple? bus stops? Are we talking about moving a sign, moving a location? What exactly is this addressing as far as what is going to take place at a bus stop? Because there are a number of bus stops. We are very split, very much aware of that. The ones who let us know, we are used for doing what we have to do for them, as well as others who will let us know. They have a problem with these bus stops are put there, but they're too close. So therefore, what's happening is cars are parking in areas which blocks the streets of the people who live on that street, and they're the ones who are requesting that we do this. So we're following the request of the residents. Okay. But wouldn't it make sense, if you're talking about parking or standing restrictions, wouldn't one and two also be correlated with number four, if we're talking about where people are parking? And we're talking about community. Roosevelt is only one square mile. So as far as travelable space for a bus, it doesn't really have those many roads for a bus to be on. And secondarily, the bus stops in Roosevelt don't have the same type of accommodations again as other more politically connected and economically elevated communities in the township of Hempstead. So just to put a Band-Aid on a major wound is not necessarily going to fix the problem, whether it's parking or support systems. So that's why I'm asking. Okay, the, the, bus, the bus stops are run by Nassau County. Exactly. 
uh, the your review would have to go to the county executive car. So what exactly is the purpose of this law? Well, this uh, particular bus stop is no longer in existence, so we had to repeal the ordinance, and I believe we're replacing it with a no stopping here for so it's no, it's, so in other words, it's going to be no stopping and it's no longer to be a bus stop as well? Correct. Okay, what about the residents who probably needed that stop? We left it open for them, but we just added a corner clearance to the corner for sight distance for coming out of the side street. So the residents now have the option of parking. But it's the residents who do not have a car who used to be able to get the bus on that stop no longer can use that bus stop. But that, that wasn't our decision. That was a decision by Nassau County, correct? Correct. Yeah. We're just implementing the signage and repealing the old local law. Correct. So this is just to remove the signage with regard to a bus stop that no longer exists? Correct. And, and repeal the law legally. Thank you. Anybody else wish we heard on this item? All right, then, may please have a motion. I move that the public hearing be closed and the um, the law be passed. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Lukuski. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the administrative calendar. All right, there are items 5 through 86 on the administrative calendar. I also have three items that are of an urgent or emergency nature. The first is entitled Resolution Calling a Public Hearing on the Application of 3915 Austin Boulevard, Owners LLC for Rezoning from Business X District to Residence CA District at Island Park, New York. The second resolution is entitled uh, resolution adopting a CEQA ne negative declaration and determination of a type 2 action in connection with the construction of a new 3,067 square foot building to house advanced oxidation process treatment equipment by the Roosevelt Field Water District, Town of Hempstead Department of Water. And the third emergency resolution adopts a CEQA negative declaration and determination of a type 2 action in connection with the construction of a new 2,160 square foot building to house advanced oxidation process treatment equipment and an external packed tower aerator by the Uniondale Water District in the town of Hempstead, Department of Water. These items will be added to the administrative calendar as items 87, 88, and 89. Uh, first, does any member of the board wish to speak on anything on the administrative calendar? Okay, if not, I have a number of slips here today. We'll start with Felix McCutcheon. Good evening. Can you give me name and address for the record, please? Felix McCutcheon, Franklin Square. Uh, number 75. This resolution indicates the town is now going to have an additional $2.2 million of unused federal CARES funds. And the town also has $30 million of unspent federal CARES funds in the general fund reserves, as was brought up at the last town board meeting. One thing first, for completeness sake, this resolution should have indicated the uh, entities and how much they did spend. <coughs> I'm going to have to foil it now. Recently, Councilman Blakeman was at a press conference calling on the federal government to allow infrastructure funds to be used to help VFW and American Legion organizations that were negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we ask the feds for additional funds, I think we should spend the money we have. Supervisor Clayton, will you in initiate an urgent resolution right now that will allow VFW and American Legion organizations that were negatively affected by COVID-19 pandemic to make an application for these unused funds? Mr. Capture, any question on the administrative calendar? That's, that, that was a question. No, no, that's, that's a question you kind of made up. So do you have anything on the administrative calendar? Um, it was also recently reported that only 12% of Long Island restaurants received federal relief funds before the program ran out of money. Supervisor Clayton, will you initiate a resolution, urgent resolution right now that will allow restaurants that were negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic to make an application for these unused funds? 
Mr. Cash, do you have any questions regarding this? Yeah, and I want to know how you're going to use these unused funds. That was uh, that's a question about the. Uh, oh, we're actually using us uh, to, to, to tonight. We're, we're actually helping the inn right here in Hempstead that is short funds, and we're helping again provide meals to those in need. You know, food insecurity is a real topic that's taking place. And I know you love to make points about not helping people, but you know, during this pandemic, I gotta tell you right now, we have great people from Long Island Cares, the Inn, Island Harvest come together and give great proposals, and we use that money that way. So that's one of the ways we are using money. Money that wasn't used tomorrow, we're gonna be helping an entity that's feeding thousands of people. So you know what? That's what we are doing with the money. Helping people, doing right, and making sure it's spent correctly. So, do you have any other questions, Mr. Picacci? Yeah, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Um, on number 48 um, and number 73, um, one has to do with the American Rescue Plan. You'll be spending $10 million on park improvements. They say that the COVID-19 committee approved these funds. Who's on that COVID-19 committee that approved this? Uh, I haven't seen any word like that on that at all. It says, whereas the town board has created a COVID-19 committee to review and approve such, you have to look at the details of the resolution on both these 48 and 73. I, I cut and pasted it right into my uh, text here. Okay. So who's on that committee? The advisory committee. We've gone through numerous times. Yeah, but who's on that? Joe Sellers on it. Who? Joe Masella, the town attorney. Oh, so I get the names of these people? Mr. Kaji, it's, it's generally when you do a question and answer kind of thing, you ask a question, you let people kind of try and give an answer. I'll let you finish. No, no, I, I, again, you keep interrupting. I love it. So like I said to you, I was trying to hear the names and you interrupted me. So I'm trying to provide you with the... I'm sorry, please. I'm waiting. Okay, we were saying that. Joe Masella's on it. John Mascarino's on it. Also, Dr. David Newbert's on it, uh, and the Chief of Staff's on it as well. Okay. Because there's a FOIA request I received last December that indicated there was no committee. Okay. So I'm just saying there's a contradiction. You, you understand that. When, it, when, when, when you get records, official records from a FOIA that say there's no committee, and then you tell us in a resolution there is a committee, you see the problem, right? No. No, you don't see the problem. Okay. But again, you should be giving all that money, the 30 million that you have left over, the 2 million that you just, you just are getting back from these entities, and you should give them, and you spend all of it on people who need it, because businesses have gone out of business. 10 businesses in Garden City went out of business during COVID-19, they got no relief. They should get relief. Thank you, Bukashi. Uh Next I have Nicole Levino. Good evening. Can you have a name and address for the record, please? Good evening. My name is Nicole Vino. My address is 114 Greenpoint Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. I'm here today regarding agenda item 39. I'm an attorney and I represent Patrick Fahey, who's a whistleblower who brought a case on behalf of the town of Hempstead and other municipalities against Covanta Hempstead Company and Covanta Holding Company. Before you tonight on your agenda is a resolution to settle a matter for $250,000. And I have a couple of points to make about why the settlement is not in the best interest of the, the town of Hempstead, as well as why it's very premature at this matter. Just an hour ago, an article came out on Newsday um, called Brookhaven Residents Hit Imminent Covanta Settlement. That quoted, um, there's a quote from that article saying that Governor Kathy Hochul has called for a probe of the matter, meaning the settlements between Covanta and the town of Hempstead and other municipalities. I'm not sure, if you're, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the lawsuit, so I'll give a little bit of background. <laughs> the lawsuit um, alleges that Covanta took waste from the town of Hempstead and other municipalities and burned it to become hazardous waste. Command is a waste energy facility that burns garbage to create energy and the result of that is hazardous ash. They then put that ash in the Brookhaven landfill which is not allowed to take hazardous ash. Uh, the town paid 
as part of its contract, um, the town paid hundreds of millions of dollars to Pavanta to have this ash disposed of in an environmentally compliant way, which the town did not get. Uh, the $250,000 is truly peanuts compared to the hundreds of millions of dollars spent pursuant to this contract. It does little to benefit the town of Hempstead monetarily, and it also does very little to defer any future, to deter any future misconduct by Covanta, which is a billion dollar company. Additionally, members of my firm and my colleagues have expressed that we would love to tell the town more about our side of the story and the merits of the lawsuit, but your attorneys have routinely turned us down on that offer. And the information that you've gotten has been one-sided and coming directly from Covanta, the entity that, that we're suing. Um, so it's extremely premature at this time to vote on this uh, resolution, especially given the revelation this evening that uh, Kathy Vogel has called for an investigation. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Supervisor, with the general uh, understanding that we don't litigate in public, uh, I will uh, represent to the board that our outside counsel has looked at the facts and circumstances and the governing law and has recommended this settlement as being in the best interest of the town of Hempstead. Okay. Uh, next I have Bonnie Barone. Good evening to you, name and address for the record, please, thank you. Bonnie Brown, Rockville Center. Uh, much as it pains me, I think it's appropriate to congratulate those of you who uh, were re-elected in uh, the most recent election, uh, and especially the most recent winner, um, County Executive-elect Blakeman. Um, I hope with the election behind us that the board and also the new County Executive will focus on being uh, open to real transparency for residents and be more responsive to the issues that have been brought up time and time again uh, at this uh, forum. There are a number of resolutions tonight that lack specificity and context, and, and the last speaker uh, you know, illustrated that for one of them. Um, so in most cases, it's impossible for the residents to know what you're doing just from reading these resolutions. And I'll identify some of them in a minute. But I just want to remind you that a law was passed in October, which will be effective November 18th, that requires all records, not just the resolutions, but all records that will be discussed at an open meeting, such as this one, to be posted on the town's website at least 24 hours before the meeting. And I think that's really important so that the residents have an understanding of what's taking place here. So, for example, item 15 extends a pro shop and golf instruction services agreement, but the agreement's not there, so we don't know anything about it. And then item 63 uh, is ratifying a teacher instructor agreement with the same person to teach, which it appears, you know, uh, is included in item 15. But we'll never know because neither of those agreements are available for us to see and understand what's being passed here. If you look at item 39, approving the settlement, there were no details. In fact, the amount that was just mentioned isn't in there. We only know because the last speaker told us. Item 48, which is transferring $10 million of American Rescue Plan money to, to fund park infrastructure improvements, doesn't tell us anything about what those improvements are. Ten million dollars. There's 3.4 million for general fund park improvements. 6.4 million for town of Hempstead Park District. What's the difference? And what are the capital plans that you have in mind? It's ten million dollars. We have no idea from looking at these resolutions. Uh, you're amending an agreement with a company called in Environmental Engineering for apparently the sixth time from an original back in 2010 to add $125,000 to their contract, no contract attached, no terms, no reasons, a broad description of the things they work on. Please, the residents really should know what you're doing here, but this really isn't an open meeting. So I hope you'll follow the law that's effective on November 18th. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you for the kind remarks as well. 
Uh, I don't have any other slips on the administrative calendar. Does any other member of the public wish to be heard? So please walk over to the mic and give your name and address. <coughs> Where's going to begin? Me and Mary Day. I don't know where I need to look by now. You're not going to. Um, just to practice what Phyllis was saying, okay, I know you need numbers. Um, I, it's just all over the place, but we can do, I can talk about 71, 74, 75, just to give somebody context. Earlier, when we were finally able to get back into this facility during COVID, we were uh, told, basically lectured at, about how we were requesting information about where the emergency COVID relief fund was going. And we were assured that those resources were being utilized by the township. Last meeting, we heard that there was money that was directly from COVID relief that was going into it, and it was quoted, and it's in your own documents, from the great people that I was admonished that take down this information. It was going into a rainy day fund. Um, you just mentioned, Supervisor Clavin, about food insecurity, as if you were trying to lecture Felix Fricacci, who has been doing much more of the research and trying to spare many of the taxpayers um, the obvious wasteful expenditures. I mean, we have touchless toilets in this facility when there was nobody in the building. So I, I applaud anything going to the end. But there are residents who are starving in their homes just because they're still trying to pay for these taxes. So we're looking at the resources, and now everybody's blasting the news day about resources going to the dilapidated VMW halls. And if anybody knows anything about me and my support and advocacy for veterans, I'm still trying to get this group, and now County Executive Elect Blakeman, you will find at least in Nassau County, that you know, due in large part to my insistence when it comes to contracts, that they at least list those few opportunities when a minority or a veteran or a disabled entrepreneur gets a contract. I've yet to see that in the town contracts here. So I know you're on your way out, but maybe you can talk to everybody that's kind of like their chest is all puffed out with the new kind of, you know, power base that they have here that at some point maybe news they might get to the point when they're not soaking up the advertising dollar from the township they might actually get back to doing investigative work before this build back better funds get brought out for some investigation because the scandal is out there it's coming i can already it's already there whenever you get more than 20 dollars in this township somebody's taking 19 dollars and 50 cents of it but we have to pay back the rest of it so let's look at where this CARES money is actually going. Let's address the issues. Let's talk about creating jobs for our veterans who are suffering, support services for our seniors, and actually getting people of color, including maybe putting a woman on that COVID committee, because I didn't hear about any female or veteran or a person of color on the COVID committee. Thank you. I know uh, someone else had to raise their hand about talking to the administrative calendar. How are you doing? If you can come on over, go to the back mic, that would be great. Thank you. Good evening, your name is Dr. Sutter. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Pearl Jacobs, you can be um, I have a question, item number seven on the administrative calendar, resolution ordering direct uh, construction to construct a sidewalk area along certain streets in the town of Hempstead. Would one of those streets include uh, Front Street, Route 102, the sidewalks, because the road conditions are awful, and the curves, uh, there are no curves because the road condition of Front Street has shifted as such that the curves are no longer curve height, so there are no curves on Front Street. So I'm just asking, um, would Front Street be included in that, um, it doesn't state what uh, streets will be done. Okay, let's see if it's here from the highway department or from engineer. Please identify yourself so that you know. Thank you. 
you have Terry Dent information and, and uh, Front Street is not a town roadway. Um, you would have to contact the state about any kind of improvement. Typically, the uh, budding property owner is responsible for any kind of curbing. Uh, that's typical in Nassau County and the town of Hempstead along with New York State. Okay. Sir, I am well aware that Front Street is not a town road. So if that's the case, why then does the town of Hempstead have large billboards, town of Hempstead revitalization, downtown revitalization uh, program in effect on the east and west sides of Front Street? Does it say something about the curbs on those signs? Again, I ask, if Front Street is a state road, which it is, and I know it was when I came up here, why does the town of Hempstead have large billboard signs on either direction of Front Street, east and west bound? There are large signs, I brought a picture, they're stating downtown revitalization program. That is giving, the, it's giving the community the impression that the town of Hempstead is doing revitalization on Front Street, which I know is a, is a state road. Okay. Uh, Why? <clears throat> to me, that's deceptive, extremely deceptive. Okay. Mr. Rackham? Good evening, Supervisor, um, members of the town board. Uh, the town of Hempstead received a grant from uh, Congresswoman Kathleen Rice to redo uh, this, the uh, streetscape on Front Street. That's why those signs are there. Okay. Okay, well that's encouraging news. I, I'm happy. Is that a collaborative effort between the town and the and the uh, and the camp and the uh, state? Uh, you just said the, the congresswoman Rice got uh, funds from the town, so it's collaborative with the congresswoman. Okay, the, the town has a sign, so the town has something to do with this because this town signs are there. Yes, the, the, the town got the grant, so we're so, utilizing um, the money. So there. when would this uh, revitalization uh, commence? It will commence in the springtime. In the spring, but you put the signs up right before election. No, we put them up after we received the grant. Well, that was that coincided with right before election, but I'm just saying, so you put the signs up maybe six, eight, seven months before the uh, project will commence? We put them up after with the uh, award from the council. Okay, do you, can you tell me how much the award is? <clears throat> uh, I can get you that exact number. Would you? I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other member of the audience wish to be heard? Okay, if not, may I have a motion on the administrative calendar? I move the administrative calendar in its entirety from 1 through 89. Second. Supervisor Plato. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Pazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Guzzi. Aye. Councilman I make a motion to adjourn. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Blakeman. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz-Tazito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilman Guzman. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Okay, now the formal town board meeting has been adjourned. The town board made a list of the comments of the residents. Uh, the number of slips in, we'll start off with Felix Bercacci. Can you name an address for the record, please? Felix Bercacci, Franklin Square. Did the Dublin Group receive credit from the town for the 2020 fiscal year? Mr. Kelly, it's, it's public comments on you. You've been doing this for a long time, so. Okay. No, I just, just say pass, you know. Did the ethics board receive my ethics complaint against Thomas Wilbig for violating the compliance officer's law by donating to political campaigns? When can I expect to receive acknowledgement of my, uh, from the ethics board about my ethics complaint? It's over a month now. Okay. On the Woodmere Club case, uh, recently a federal magistrate uh, allowed all the town's motions to dismiss, except one regarding Seagram. Last year, Blakeman said my arguments against the town's zoning plan for the Woodmere Club lack substance. Well, apparently the federal magistrate did not feel that way and allowed the case to move forward. Yes, the town is appealing it, but not really on the merits, and it's very vague. They're essentially saying they don't have standing to do this, and there's no finality in their state, you know, in state court. And the town, uh, I guess the, they want the owners to apply for variances on the land before they could get a final determination. 
Specifically, the court recommends that the motions to dismiss the secret claims be granted without prejudice to replete at the conclusion of the secret process, but the motions be denied with respect to all of the claims and that such claims be allowed to proceed to discovery. Um, we're wasting a lot of money on this case. Uh, we should drop the whole that legislation. We should allow the Nassau County Planning Commission, the people, the residents, the owners of the club, the town board members if they wish to participate in the normal process instead of wasting a lot of money. I read all the papers. There's a lot of paper there. It's costing us a lot of money to litigate this thing. It's not necessary. There is a process. And then at the end of the day, if you don't get what we want, then you can talk about litigation at that point. But there is a process for land subdivision. Felix, um, Felix they sued us. We didn't sue them. No, you drop the legislation, and then they will drop the lawsuit. They're suing you because you zoned them out of their land. Also, I uh, foiled uh, TV ads. Uh, I was promised to foil by November 2nd. I haven't received it. Also, in another FOIL request, I, I wanted the litigation documents, the emails, I specific related to litigation. The town clerk sent me 5,600 pages. Um, it was really a waste of money because I know the outside counsel had to go through all of it. But I made it very clear, and I even printed it in red when she asked me to clarify it. I just wanted emails related to the litigation, not everything. Not every email. Thank you, Mr. Burkashi. Always nice to see you. Um, Joe Corral Brodsky.
Good evening. Your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm from Baldwin, Indira. I'm here in regards to 62 Alhambra in Baldwin. I'm a concerned citizen and the legal activity at this address must stop. The occupants at 62 Alhambra have been running an illegal mechanic shop for years. The occupant, occupant fixes cars on the street at free will with little regard to the hazard it causes to pedestrians and cars that travel through that block. He has dumped oil, antifreeze, and other hazardous materials down the sewer drain on numerous occasions, contaminating our drinking water, and has yet, and the town has yet been able to stop this illegal activity. There are illegal cars parked in the driveway of this house. There are cars jacked up in the air. There, are e there is even an engine sitting in the driveway. Imagine all the hazardous waste that is coming from that engine slowly uh, being absorbed into our soil and our drinking water. It is truly a blatant disregard for the health and safety, safety concern of our community. What is the town going to do about it? We have been, you have been aware of the situation and this house, and yet there is nothing that has been done about it to resolve the situation. This house continues to be a plague on the neighborhood. Why should the residents of Baldwin and Roosevelt be subjected to substandard living conditions, whereas other towns in this county have yet to uh, have yet to have any of these. I'm sorry, have yet to have any of these uh, addressed these concerns addressed. The sanitation department has come to this address on numerous occasions to address the blatant violations. Yet, when they came in recently stated that the debris in the yard was clear. I have proof that there is still debris in the yard, as well as there is a voting po uh, problem because of the unhealthy conditions in that yard. Lastly, I would like to address the issue of the building department of code enforcement. When I met with Daniel, Le uh, Leo, Frederick, Jawatsky and Mr. Capallo, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, in August, you all stated that you do not issue summonses to the homeowner. You issue summonses to the occupant of the home. Okay. First up, I, I think the, the Baldwin address is Sanitary District 2. Am I right about that, Councilman? That's Sanitary District 2. So they would have handled the, uh, the, the pickup there. Uh, Commissioner Jarowitz and the inspectors as well. Before we get to the mic, you can name that just so she knows. Thanks, Governor. Yeah, you can walk around. Very good. This is the Commissioner of the Building Department. Uh, Fred, are you aware of this property? Yes, I am. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the town and board. This is a very complex situation. Working closely with the town attorney's office, we have served numerous summonses. Oh, you have served summonses? Yes, they have been in court. But no. this is the real problem. The house, and I'm an architect, not a lawyer, but the house, the mortgage holder, is hot. And the three people who pay the mortgages was all discovered by the town attorney's office through investigative work. So now, the quest, legal question becomes they're figuring out how to serve HUD, the owner. In addition, the LLCs, the master plan was an attempt to serve the LLCs and to get the house boarded up, which we believe is being occupied by the operators of this horrible situation. But again, it's a complex legal situation, and we're lying, we are relying so, on the town. So, so, you, so you haven't, it hasn't been ignored. You've actually. Oh, no, we've been working on this. Uh, 
as, as much as possible. Uh, we, then, you know, may, maybe you could take some time and, and talk to the resident in the back to give them the impression that there's nothing taking place so you can give a little bit of an update and then... Uh, so my question is, that we stated that you do not issue violations to the homeowner, whereas I have received a violation I, I, I know. To the homeowner. I, I know. That's why I, 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 a, a summons ma to ma the occupant of the house. Ma'am, ma ma I'm going to have you go to the back and talk to the, the, the commissioner and give you the details on it. But obviously, uh, they have issued some violations there, so that's a good thing. And I'll keep but moving on. To the occupant, not to, to the homeowner. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I have uh, Daryl. Good evening. If you just give me name and address for the record. <coughs> Yeah, I'm in if you, you just get a, you get a little closer to the mic if you to hear, that's all. Yeah, my name is Joe. I live in Nashville County. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Well, my name is Joe. I live in Nashville County. I have been coming to this meeting since June 2021. Today I'm here to ask Mrs. Dorothy, all of the building department, uh, Mr. Player, you said that you were going to put it on the agenda. You never did. Um, I'm asking you guys when in 62 hours heaven it's going to be resolved. Nothing has been resolved. Um, be, to be honest with you, I had a meeting, had meeting after meetings with town attorney, I had meetings with all the building department, the inspectors, and everybody. And they said the same thing when they told told the dealer that they are not allowed, they're not going to give a violation to people who has um, who own the house. They're going to give violations to people who are occupying the house. What's the purpose of giving the people who, uh, violations to people who occupy the house? They have no responsibility for that home. So they care less. In my hand, right here, I get a foil request. And this money in my hands for a friend, 37, for one year, 37 9 11 call showing that he has a legal, has a legal shop, he has a legal activity going on in his home. These individuals do not belong in that home. And they are there, and the town is telling us they can't do nothing about it. The police are doing their job, the state tells us the town is not doing their job. So now, here we are, we haven't getting any results from anybody. All we're getting is a band-aid. But before the election came, they told him to clean the yard. They told him to uh, do all the certain things. They put a band-aid on it. And now the election is over. They gave him free reins to continue business as usual. It's unfair to the homeowners who ask to pay in taxes to everybody paying taxes here. We're not getting any results. This happened every election. Every election. This didn't happen today. This happened every election. We need you guys to do something about it. Or investigate the building department. And then see why they can't do anything about it. Somebody has to do something. It's not fair. We can do anything to you guys, but both of you guys in to help us. Why are we not getting any results? Okay. Uh, obviously, obviously, you heard uh, the commissioner before said it actually gone down to the property. The, the issue is it's owned by HUD. Uh, so maybe we need to uh, reach out to Congresswoman Rice uh, to see about if HUD can get service, or maybe stepping up and doing something to give us a helping hand, especially since it's owned by the Fed. All right, so again, you know, they're down there, but you know the laws are, are what they are. They can only provide a serve who it is. But like I said, the commissioner is going to take the time. Uh, please go back there, and, and he'll fill you in on what they're doing. But maybe at this point, reach out to Congresswoman Rice and ask her to get involved since it's owned by the federal government. Can I can I add on to it? The guy brought me to say out loud and deal with my witness. He said he had political connection. That's why he's allowed to stay here. Please, please, I Mr. Darrell, please, Mr. Darrell, please, Ms. Gajarowicz will, will speak to you in the back as well. We have a number of people who would love to be heard tonight. Uh, and again, you know, he, he is doing him, he's making himself available right now in the back room for you. Uh, next we have Felicia jo Jackson.
Felicia Jackson? All right. Uh, Diane Madden? Good evening. 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 The election is over. Hopefully the non-stop campaigning is over. Um, you basically came in on that wave on the Democrats' failure, but now the public expects you to deliver. And one of the ongoing problems is the overpopulation, the preventable unwanted kittens that are popping up everywhere. That's one message, I don't want to leave her number on public record, but it's an ongoing problem. Your shoulder director, who I see as your little soldier in the Republican club now, I mean, he's listening to you guys. That's where he takes his orders, apparently. You're allowing this mismanagement to continue. It's time to stop it. You're still on the hook, supervisor, for the promises you made to fix the shelter and fix these programs. Um, Council, Councilman uh, D'Esposito, this is your district. Another hoarding situation. Uh, I was there a few weeks ago. There are at least 30 cats, probably just as many inside the house. And I urge you to take action. I know you had thought about a, um, in fact, we're pursuing um, a satellite TNR. I think this would be a good time to do that. Mary Gordon from Animal Lifeline just posted something saying due to the town's um, inability to continue the real TNR program, they are scraping pennies together not to close. They are picking up the slack for a five and nearly a half million dollar animal shelter. This is just one issue. You have ongoing issues at the animal shelter that are not going away. They're actually just getting worse because they've not been addressed. So I hope there's a plan in place, Supervisor, to do things a little bit differently and not just assume that you can get elected on the failures and the issues of the Democratic Party that you really have no power over anyway. Um, as far as the veteran issue, if you really wanted to help veterans, you'd employ them. That's what they need. They need jobs. Thank you, Ms. Madden. Um, next, I have uh, Jay Blackman. Good evening. If you just give your name and address for the record, thank you. Good evening, Ward. Uh, my name is Jay Blackman. I'm from 1566 Gallery Street in East Meadow. And I've been before the board a few times before concerning the prospective solar farm on the Oceanside landfill. And hopefully we can get some clear answers tonight as to whether this solar farm will ever come to pass. Uh, I represent the Sierra Club, which I am an executive member of, the Environmental Club of Oceanside High School, who's been working with us. I look a little too old to be in the Sierra Club High School, but uh, anyway, we, uh, we also, I also represent the 2,000 petitioners who signed a petition calling for the development of the uh, solar power station in the town of Hempstead. Uh, the Sierra Club met with Mr. D'Esposito in a virtual conference with the staff 
which was back on February 3rd of this year with his legislative aides, uh, and we were provided with a condensed version of a 100-page, almost a 100-page feasibility report written by the Clearview consultants of Quorum, who were hired by the board back in December of 2018. And this uh, also included, this feasibility report also included an artist's rendering of what the solar farm would look like on the Oceanside landfill, along with battery storage for those not so sunny days. He told us at the meeting uh, that the only reason the project was being held up was because you were considering additional locations for the solar site, since you prefer to have the developer construct the sites all at one time. I'm here to ask whether you found those other locations over the course of the nine months since we last met. That's the question. Has anything been done in looking at these locations? Yeah, there's locations that have been looked at. We've met with the supervisor staff and I have met with commissioners to uh, consider certain uh, certain locations throughout the town, whether it was parks, whether it was um, parking fields or, or different facilities, and it's something that we're working on. There's also got to be a, a, a conversation that's had with the Oceanside community uh, to make sure that the community is welcoming of a giant landfill that's going to be a solar farm. So there, it, it's a work in progress. Well, uh, you were invited to a uh, virtual town hall at the Oceanside Library, which was held April 20th, a couple of months after we met with you. And it was attended by over 100 people. And there were absolutely no problems from anybody. Not all 100 people were from Oceanside? They were from Oceanside, at the, uh, every one of them. You, if you want to, you can call up the Oceanside Library and get a list of them. Uh, uh, no, it, it, the concern really is, you know, you, you want to get, you have a lot of practice going on out there. I mean, there's a lot, I heard there was something the other day in East Meadow, you, you want to get the community on board, so I just want to know if it was all Oceanside residents who said there was no opposition to it. I just want to make sure that's the case. Well, the, the answer is no, it, it, was, it was not 100 Oceanside residents. know nothing about it. You didn't know anything about the meeting at the Oceanside Library. It was, no, it was publicized, it was on, on the internet. And, and I'm not saying that certain people are going to make the difference, but we have received emails and calls in the office of people that are against the solar, solar farm. So, like I said, it is a work in progress. The town of Hempstead and our facilities, it's a huge undertaking. You saw the, the resources that the supervisor and the board have put into trying to find ideal locations. Uh, to further solar in the town, and it's something that we're working on. How many locations could there possibly be in the town of Hempstead that would be suitable for solar farms? Well, I was I'm not a solar had, engineer. Had That's why we have was, companies testifying, saying that there were only slivers of property. Jay, Jay and, and I appreciate it, and I know the passion. And look, and I have a, we've already made a commitment to you know turning the, the town workforce uh, vehicles over by 2014. Uh, you know, we support a lot of it, uh, but you know, sometimes it's not just one solar farm. You know, you look at solar charging stations. Technology has changed so much in the last three years alone. Uh, there's a lot to be done. But I think the council is right. It's kind of it's kind of done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you are. You know, you, you, know you, you do things fast and you, you do it wrong. But but there's also the, the fact that you always have to get community support. You can always follow up with us. We got we got a number here, Jay, that we want to go through tonight. Um, next I have coming up here is Stu Kroll. Good evening, Mr. Crow. If you give your name and address for the record, Stu Crow, Great Neck. <clears throat> I just want to make some very brief remarks on the uh, the election. I also, I guess, reluctantly have to congratulate those of you that were victorious. I guess it's everybody on the board. Thank you. And I will also say that uh, you guys are very well organized, very well financed, and your opposition runs on a wink and a prayer, which is being generous on my part in saying that. Uh, the town shelter is apparently fixing one cat per week for each person. This continues to this day. This is a fraction of what the shelter was doing prior to COVID. There's no possible reason why the PNR program can't now return to its peak level immediately. There are cats dying and suffering on the streets. Doesn't that mean anything at all to this board? Or is it more important that excess money be diverted back into the general fund? 
I have recently become aware that a private individual has been burdened with the task of fixing apparently 35 cats by himself. It should by not be necessary for individuals to be conducting GoFundMes or any other means of raising money to pay privately for what the town should be doing. Taxpayers would have a full-fledged revolt if people had to raise money to have their garbage collected or their roads repaired. And speaking of animal lifeline, they're struggling, they're an animal rescue group struggling along and institutions that have been given, they're in 501c3, there's no reason they can't be given money, as well as educational institutions that in many cases have tens or hundreds of millions of dollars you know, in financial reserves in their endowment. This should never be allowed to occur. One cat per week makes any larger scale rescue virtually impossible, or any hoarding situation rescue impossible. Due to the failure of the town to fulfill its moral and legal obligation to fix these cats in a timely manner, good-hearted individuals try to help but end up overwhelmed in a hoarding situation. As a result of one such instance, a well-respected rescuer is currently fixed, faced with trying to socialize a large number of kittens with no assistance whatsoever. This should, this should never be occurring. It's prohibitively expensive, and I would immediately ask the town to pledge logistical and, and support in whatever manner is necessary, whether it be food or anything else. There's no reason that this, this should occur. The town is sitting on tens of millions of dollars in care funds given by the federal government to assist small businesses and other 501c3s hurt by the pandemic. These animal rescues have obviously been hurt by the pandemic because the amount of cats being fixed is just dwindled, you know, to next to nothing. So they should certainly be getting immediate assistance. I would now ask the town to donate funds to adoption centers that can help individuals with adequate long-term, long neuter, spay and neuter programs and help with food and necessary medical care. Whether or not political pressure can be brought to bear at this point on this town board is not the point. You have a moral obligation to do the right and compassionate thing. You need to help these defenseless cats suffering through no fault of their own and to assist many of your dedicated constituents who are being overwhelmed trying to help these animals. Mr. Clayton, one of your campaign promises before your first term was to markedly improve horrendous shelter conditions brought about by Laura Gillen. Somehow over the past two years, you managed to make conditions there considerably worse. It's my fervent hope that you can put politics in the past aside and do the morally right thing. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you for visiting Town of Hempstead. And, and I just want to verify that uh, we don't do one a week. In fact, the week of 11 to 2, we did 29. So that's not kind of, kind of accurate what you said. Next, I have up uh, Ms. Maraday. Good evening. Good evening. I know everybody's kind of getting rushed, so you know, I guess you can kind of celebrate in the back while residents continue to suffer sadly in silence. Um, it just continues to sadden me that um, we come here, those residents that take the time out of maybe one, two, three jobs or caregiving or whatever they're doing, um, family members that they're probably dealing with and they have to get somebody to watch over them to come here and basically be insulted by people that um, they run around and smile in their face and try to get elected and once they get elected it seems to be when they sit in that seat I don't know what happens when somebody sits in that supervisor seat except for possibly the current clerk because I, I will pay respect where it's due when, um, when Kate Murray was supervisor um, she did give residents, taxpayers, hard workers the respect that they would do to take the time to come here to speak before this board and most of the time she did look them in the eye when they were here speaking but I guess whatever you have to write or tweet or whoever you have to respond to as opposed to looking in the eye of the taxpayer I guess that's irrelevant. My concern continues to be with regard and he's still not looking up but anyway my concern continues to be with regard to the resources or lack of saying as it pertains to our veterans. I've yet to, I guess it was kind of a flippant comment at the last meeting when I was told that you, there is at least one veteran contractor in the town of Hempstead. You know, I would think if you wanted to brag about something that somebody between that meeting and this one would have submitted to me a list of the veteran contractors, the minority contractors, those with disabilities. You know, tell me something, give me something as opposed to the same tiresome campaign promises that previous speakers have already noted have not been fulfilled. I'm just hoping, I'm trying to be hopeful going into 2022, um, that there will be a little bit more of the real numbers. How many jobs have been created? 
how many contractors. I know diversity is just not a, a catchword here. I know you stated earlier that technology moves on, but unfortunately the same triad of cronyism, nepotism, and patronage still runs rampant in the township. And as I said earlier, maybe when Newsday, you know, gets their budget cut short, like everybody else's budget is cut short, they might actually get back to doing some investigative work before someone, somebody's political connection, gets too greedy and starts spending the new influx of funding. Because clearly, it's not going to the services that are needed. It's still not going to the communities. And even though it was mentioned, I believe, by Councilwoman Goosby, all the great things that are being done in minority communities, the previous residents who were up here, they had their issues, make it plain that that's not happening either. But again, I still have to remain hopeful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mary. And just so you know what to do is I take notes of what people are saying or everyone's name down and everything. So, so thank you. Notes. All right. Next, I have Bonnie Barone. Bonnie Grove, Rockville Center. Um, there are so many different things to talk about. I'm not really sure what to do in these three minutes. Uh, I'm sorry to see that uh, Mr. Blankman left because I did have some uh, thoughts for him, but I will uh, share them anyway. Uh, he was elected, of course, to uh, institute his policies and his plans, and that's as it should be. Uh, this one area, though, I hope he will follow the pattern of the present county executive, and that is to hire people based on their knowledge and their uh, experience and their intelligence to work in his administration, not just hire based on party. That's one thing that you might disagree with many things she did. That's one thing that this county executive did very well, and I hope he will follow that pattern because the county needs experienced, knowledgeable, intelligent people, and I hope hiring will be on merit. And uh, just as her transition team was bipartisan to get the best and the brightest to help her new administration, I hope that county executive elect Blakeman will do the same thing because that benefits all of us in the county. Um, on the question of transparency, just to continue on that. Uh, again, I hope that now that the election and campaigning is behind us, we can focus on some things that people have been speaking about to this board um, for a very good long time. I don't know if anyone's listening, but I'll continue anyway. Uh, government transparency. There's actually a spot on the website that's called Government Transparency. And when you click on it, there are a number of different categories, but they are not uh, filled with information. So for example, item one is supposed to show all executed contracts that are currently in effect. It doesn't, I don't know if anyone's looked at it lately, but there are like 13 contracts for all of this town that are listed and none of them have been uh, put in force in the past two years. Uh, so I don't know why it's up there. Same thing, the final adopted all capital improvement plans. Nothing up to date and especially with the, uh, the uh, allocation, they have $10 million for parks, capital improvements. It'd be nice to see the plan. It says it's there, but it's not there. Take a look at the website. Don't make believe it's there. Take those titles down if you're not going to share them with the residents. Um, and finally, on the question of the animal shelter. I mean, I've, I've been coming here since the spring and in the past years before that. And we always hear about the problems with the animal shelter. The board has dug in its heels and won't make any changes. Can't you just meet with some of the people who have ideas? Form, form, a, form, a committee, form a committee to sit down and talk about ideas. It can only benefit all of us. Thank you very, very much. Councilman, excuse me for, for a minute. I'll give it over to Councilman Gisbizino. Steve Edmondson. Probably I got to fix it a little bit. <laughs> Instead of fighting with everybody, why don't we try to get along? I brought the Goodspeed's office. I've been involved with politics since I'm 12 years old. I mean, 
I want to ask my uh, councilman, uh, what's the story with Oceanside Sanitation District number seven? I mean, everybody wants the Christmas presents of these money. How come we can't get any money for Oceanside Sanitation District number seven? And I heard they didn't put in for it, and then that would be the reason. <laughs> How do we go about putting in for it? They could call the town attorney's office and ask for an application. Okay. I also want to talk to the town attorney's office because I think the town of Hempstead can reclaim some money from 1888 towards the Meadow Lane in Elmont because I used to do the security there and I was talking to Mr. Mascarella about that with the builder, Rajin Bethusa, which was also investigated by the town of North Hempstead for his shabby work at the building over there. So I might want to meet with the county attorney. I think we can get some money back to the town of Hempstead. And if you're looking for Mark Matias, the former county clerk, he's working for a lot of security. I didn't know that until the other day, because he was my boss. Woke me up to being 10 minutes late. And then somebody said hello to him. And I didn't know he was the former town clerk, which is also the lawsuit for him is still going on the town of Hempstead. And the office of uh, Senior Councilwoman Good Speaker, she's always good at responding, should be open in Roosevelt. I mean, it's just sitting there gathering dust. I mean, you need a volunteer right to sit in there. Well, you can give me a bed to live there. Because even though I'm an Oceanside resident, taxpayer, and elected, my election, I mean, um, where I vote is Oceanside, I still don't have a house. I mean, maybe I should move in with the cats, because everybody keeps talking about the cats, but I mean, I mean, we had cats in there. We also had a pit bull over at the Beacon House over there in Roosevelt with no license to like old Mark over there with the animal shelter and then the SPCA from Madison County and finally threatened with a press conference with Diane Madden and then all of a sudden someone just got issued. Thank you. Thank you, Sanderson. Uh, next I have uh, Kevin McKenna. <laughs> Good evening, if you your name and address for the record. Kevin McKenna, Syosset, New York. I, um, I'm here representing uh, Town of Hempstead News, um, as well as Town of Oyster Bay News. Um, I am live streaming this event, and I, I plan on coming here in the future and um, uh, continuing uh, very active investigative reporting that um, I am working on uh, in Nassau County. I wanted to uh, congratulate the newly elected county executive, Bruce Blakeman, but unfortunately, I don't blame him. He probably stepped out maybe to celebrate. Um, but um, the woman before that talked about um, Newsday uh, not doing any more investigative reporting, that's actually um, one of the reasons that motivated me uh, to get um, a whole bunch of investigative stories going right now that um, you will be hearing a lot more about. And I plan on spending uh, time here in the town of Hempstead. Um, this morning, I, I'm a regular attendee town of Oyster Bay board meetings. And um, I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm watching because I haven't been here in a while. And I actually, this morning, I actually, this morning, um, was complimenting to Supervisor Saladino the way that the town of Hempstead runs their meeting compared to uh, the way that the town of Worcester Bay does. It's done totally different. You know, you do the resolutions individually, you let people speak separately. But what I really emphasized this morning is that in the past, you do tend to um, involve the commissioners and department heads in answering questions, something that is not done in the town of Worcester Bay. So, um, uh, Supervisor Clavin, I, I want to make a request of you if maybe you could spend some time with Supervisor Saladino 
What did you do wrong? <laughs> and if maybe give him some of the charm that I see you have. <laughs> actually, I think that you could actually learn from him. You know, I, I, I went to Town Waste Debate board meetings for four years and I wrestled with him back and forth. I only met him face to face a few months ago and I've since met him twice since. And, and I can see why people elect him because he is a likable guy. So I think that you have a lot to learn from him. But I think that... I, I appreciate that, Mr. McKenna. And I don't take it to heart. You know, I try and, I, and I really think, more importantly, I think that you could bring a lot of what you do here uh, to the town of Oyster Bay. I, I would be happy to, to follow with, with the, the supervisor and my colleague in Oyster Bay. We appreciate you being here and thank you for joining us in the town. And, and thank you very much for your, 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 your kind remarks. Uh, they're very appreciative. We do have a, a number of other people we want to go through here, so we, we appreciate you joining us and, and it's nice to see you. I'd love uh, to know next, which, next, I'm going to bring up uh, Pearl Jacobs. In closing, I'd love to know which charm school you go to. <laughs> <laughs>
Commissioner Rennie, could you give assistance on that too? Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Next, I have uh, Fred Mass. Ms. Jacobs, if you want, Commissioner Marino's right there. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Fred Ness, Merrick. Uh, just want to uh, bring up the topic of the loss of canopy trees in our town as well as numerous areas on Long Island. But the, uh, the need to uh, strengthen, reinforce the town of Hempstead uh, tree preservation and tree removal codes uh, presently that seems to only uh, cover trees that need to be replaced that are between the curb and the sidewalk, essentially the public strip. As far as private property, uh, we've been seeing a lot of trees in our area removed. Uh, bad enough the storms that have taken down trees, uh, but people have been willy-nilly and random in removing uh, large old trees, 100, 200 years old, that are very important to the environment, which we're a part of. Um, uh, whether you believe in climate change or not, uh, and the fact that we as a species have been accelerating the process, uh, the climate has been changing on the planet Earth for billions of years, we have to keep in step with it. Uh, trees and plants are a prime source of carbon uptake, uh, ameliorating uh, the problem with greenhouse gases uh, should be a primary focus of the town of Hempstead. If you were to look at the towns of Oyster Bay, the towns of Huntington, and even the town of Freeport, have much stronger uh, codes and laws requiring uh, permitting and even whether a tree can be removed. A uh, person following me will have more substantial numbers uh, to strengthen the argument. And uh, let's see some movement in a positive direction uh, to prevent tree loss. Uh, one suggestion I have is uh, while the local governments have been good in putting things on websites and even a place like the Clark Botanical Garden, uh, which uh, has a large area of native plant species, which we should be encouraging homeowners to use as instead of, in, you know, uh, non-native and invasive species plants that are being planted in gardens. Uh, it's great, it's on the website, but if you're not knowledgeable, if you're not uh, interested in going in the direction of native plants and trees, you don't know where to look. I think it should be something that should be a hard copy uh, in mailboxes, perhaps even an ad campaign on TV. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ness. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to give your contact information to uh, Trish Moriarty. She's been working on the tree project right over there, so she'll do follow-ups, especially uh, your idea of uh, you know maybe a public campaign. So thank you very much. Uh, next, I have Andrea Martone. Ms. Mario, raise your hand so she needs it. Ms. Nas, there you go. She's going to give you a card right there. Hi, um, I have the same concern as spoken previously. Um, I also agree that there should be some more education to the residents about the harm of taking down trees um, and education about um, what kinds could be planted and maybe if there could be an arborist in the town that could come visit and help residents understand about maybe saving their tree if it's sick or what could be planted in place. I've sent an email to Mr. Carini and my friend has sent one to Mr. Dunn. So if there's anything we can do, we would love to move forward with that. Okay. That's fine. Maybe you need to follow up too, Ms. Morales, on the trees. That'd be great. Uh, next I have Janice Blake. Good evening, do you your name and address for the record? That is Blake Clark Street with an E in Emma. Our um, street sign is misspelled. If you get that changed, that would be amazing. Okay, um, to fix climate change, 
Stop making chemtrails. Stop changing the weather. Um, corporations pollute much more than any individual here could. If we all stop polluting, it wouldn't even make a dent in what the corporation is doing. Um, solar farms, they cause more pollution than they save. They're bad for birds, they're bad for the environment. They, it sounds like a good idea, but it's not. Okay, I do not submit to 5G radiation. We're all right now, even you guys are walking around in a microwave. It's bad for us, for the animals, everybody. Um, there will be a reset, not the one you're thinking about, but there will be one. Let's go, Brandon. Um, I do a lot of TNR because I love the cats. I love especially kittens. So, um, what we want to come and instead, I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to say what I think the solution is. We need a young, passionate vet in there that loves cats to uh, and to do TNR. And if I want to bring in a cat, I pay the taxes. The cat does not pay the taxes. So if I want to bring in a cat from the moon, I should be able to bring in that cat because I'm paying the taxes. Just shut up and do TNR. You work for me. That's what I'm saying, okay? I can bring in a cat I want. Now they, they want to take our driver's license to TNR our cat. You're not allowed to do that. You can't put my driver's license in your database. That's very, very highly uh, important information for us. I know, uh, you know, like, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Cheney, 9-11, just ripped up everybody a new one as far as uh, no more privacy, but you cannot, the town has said, animal shelter cannot take people's driver's license and, and make a copy of it. And they're doing it. And it's like, what? No, you can't have my driver's license. Well, you can't tune out a cat if we can't have your driver's license. I mean, what are you going to do? It's like, uh, all right, so, um, Okay, there's this address, it's called 16 Litchfield, it's right by my house, right down from King Alberto's behind the ABC fruit stand, it used to be, now it's, I think it's Ram, which they only have one piece of organic fruit in there at all. Oh, I'm almost done. A lot of cats there, needs to be cleaned up. Uh, what I really want to say is, oh, also PSA for TNR cats, let's go Brendan. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Um, Next I have is Harriet Idiot. Harriet, can you come on up to the mic there, please? Give your name and address, that'd be great. Hi, my name is Harriet Mediate. I came here tonight in support of oh, in support of Janet Blake, who does <laughs> tremendous work for the uh, TNR program. Uh, we take our own money. We pay for all of this. I feed the strays that have been TNR. I don't feed cats that are not done because it, it's pitiful to see all these little animals that really, no fault to their own, man does this and have to, re us, rely on our money to pay to have them done or to pay to feed them. This problem could be addressed if we had humane thinking veterinarians or Wantua who does it, now only allows us one cat per week, which is ridiculous, when there's hundreds of them, and I mean hundreds, all over the neighborhoods. Every neighborhood has them. Like I said, through no fault of their own, man is the problem, not the cats but we feel for them and we want to help them. But I have been doing this for like 30 years on my own, with my own money, and I believe that our town and our taxes could do better. And I thank you and hope that you will take this into consideration uh, for the benefit of the animals. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McGinn. Uh, next I have up Gary Levine. Good evening, 
you give your name next for the record? Thank you. Sure. Gary Levine, Town of Hempstead, Allen Park. Um, S, as in Senate, 7245. We'll turn New York State into a no kill state, hopefully, the first quarter of 2022. So, I've already spoken to the other townships in Nassau. Please get ready for building a couple of sanctuary areas for some dogs that might need a little bit of TLC. Um, if you look up Kenos Animal Sanctuary, that's a template, K-E-N-O-S. He also has his own Facebook page, James Kenos. I donated to him. He's amazing. He's got like 40 dogs, all heated, cottages, AC, electrical, and uh, it's all done on fundraising. And, um, the man's amazing, so his template is going to be needed soon, hopefully. Not only here, but all over the state of New York. So, unfortunately, this is my third stop. Well, I don't mean unfortunately, but I'm sorry I wasn't able to get here earlier. Um, we guys be willing to, you know, if this law passes, it's being co-sponsored by Assemblyman Weprin on the Democratic side and on the GOP side, Senator Phil Boyle. Um, would you guys be willing to, you know, look into that? If, 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 it, if, it, if it passes and it's signed by the governor, we would we'd have to look at it. But uh, okay. it's said, it said it's seven two four five. I got that down. I appreciate that. And um, there's two dogs at the shelter right now that I'm really focusing on trying to help. One's a shepherd, three year old named Lily Rose, and there's another dog. Pity mix named Zena. Zena was in the office, you know, a bunch of times a week, and then I heard that she was taken out of that environment. I don't know what happened, but uh, you know, I can understand these things do happen. Is the public allowed to start volunteering again to walk, or have you guys thought about that yet, or what's the official? If it's taking off the ground after, I'll have you talking with our, our animal shelter director over there and, and the, the commissioner, uh, Marina, to follow up on that. I, should I call them tomorrow or? The, 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 no, they'll, they'll talk to you right now. They're both here. That's perfect. Okay. Because, you know, I, I try to visit the dogs um, around my lessons that I have in that area. And um, the, the shepherd really needs help. Shepherds are not meant to be in a shelter. I mean, the dog is safe, eating, healthy, but that dog will break down quick and already has a sensitivity, you know, like being touched on the back lightly, which means the dog might have been, you know, in a bad situation prior to that. But I believe I can help her. Um, when I say a couple times a week, I'm talking four or five, maybe six, you know. I know Mondays you guys are closed. So I was wondering, do I need to speak to the town attorney about that? Well, why don't we have, you got uh, the commissioner right there, they'll talk to you in the back right after, right after you're done here and, and, and follow up with you. Thanks. Um, i got three seconds left. I could sign a waiver, I guess, similar to any volunteer. But you'll follow up there, Mr. Levine. Thank you very much for coming tonight, all right? They're right there. Gentlemen, raise your hand there so you can see it. They'll talk to you in the back. Okay. I don't have any other slips. Is there anybody else that has not spoken that much to be here tonight? If not, then I wish everybody happy Thanksgiving, and thank you all. Drive home safely.